Cincinnati Reds, and you're up for Late Night Reds Talk. Well, hey, friends, what is going on? Happy Friday night. I did not expect that at 1051 I'd be going live, but uh seems like that is needed tonight. Uh, of course, it's a terrible night for Luis Castillo to get traded to the Mariners. Uh, uh, Tim is out in Nashville. Uh, Carlos is uh, doing something. Clay's at a bachelor party, but uh, I believe his own, and he's still going to join us because he's the man. Uh, before I go too crazy here and jump in and... Uh, uh, forget, let me uh, tell you about our friends at Bet Online. See, it's way harder to uh, to do this when you're the only guy. So hold on. There we go. All right. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first of market odds and lines. Find reviews and news from every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today and use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code Believe50, that is B L E A V. Five zero to receive your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online is where the game starts. Oh boy, uh, I got some people joining in here, so let's get them on. Clay Snowden, Arm Layton, Steve <laughs> Steve Mauer. Everyone just decided to join here at once. Yo, hey, dude, dude, Clay's at a bachelor party right now. I'm sorry. I'm at, my sorry own, to I'm at my own bachelor party and told all my buddies I have to go hang out with my freaking internet friends. They're like in the other room probably thinking I'm just so lame. What's up, Steve? Hey, what's up, Clay? How's it going, guys? All right. Well, let's uh, – or is it okay if we get Clay's thoughts on this first so we can actually Absolutely. go back to his bachelor party and then we'll get to you? <laughs> I right. want to stay on it. Good for you, Clay. You're more dedicated than me. Um. So, man, I'm going to say all this stuff about them, and then Arm's just going to, like, completely just one-up me on all of it. But I love this trade right off the bat. I thought this was a massive haul. Um, I was talking to somebody yesterday, and I said I would be shocked if they got three top five guys from a system. Um, I just didn't think it would be especially of, of a system like this. Um, I've been high on Edwin Arroyo, and Arm can tell you that. I was texting him in the beginning of this year asking if this guy was top 100 material, and he – He's shown it so far this season. And Marte, right now they're both playing shortstop. I could see Marte play third base for the Reds in the future if if he's, you know, going to make it to to uh, the show. Um, Levi Stouts, a guy who's been climbing up boards, I don't know nearly as much about him as Aaron Will, so I'll save him for that. I know he's a 24-year-old in Double A, and a lot of Mariners fans were talking about him in the months le- leading up to the deadline. Um, so yeah, th- those kind of big three there, um, I, I was just shocked by the return and I'm very happy with it. I know that a lot of people will see the ages of the players and say, oh, that, you know, this is several years down the road. Well, then why the hell are you allowed to say Ellie De La Cruz at 20 years old is two years away too? Like, it's not impossible for, I think, Marte to be here sooner than 2025, um, but yeah, those are just my new, uh, initial thoughts. I'm glad that Luis Castillo is going somewhere with some familiar teammates. And um, I'm also really glad, and it's, it's, it needs to be said, I'm really happy that Seattle's doing this type of move. This is a team that has been in the dumps for a long time. They finally have an opportunity here, and it looks like they're going all in. That's good for any team that um, in the MLB that's kind of been in a similar position to them. So overall, as a baseball fan, I'm happy. As a Reds fan, I'm ecstatic. Awesome, Clay. All right, well, get get out of here. Get back to your uh, your fun weekend, and uh, I'm going to pass it over to Aram. Aram Layton of Just Baseball, uh, thank you so much for last minute coming on and chatting with us, uh, yeah. us dingbats about this. Tell us about this trade. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to. Actually, uh, funny enough, I was just talking about potential Reds deals earlier today with Mo Egger, and, and we didn't really get – into the Mariners potential package and what that could look like. And um, honestly, if we did get into it, I probably would have said that the Mariners would try to put together a deal without Noel V. Marte involved. And uh, I'm sure they tried, but obviously it was to, to no avail. I, I think the fact that 
the Mariners were willing to part with somebody like like Noelvi Marte on top of the other pieces is pretty crazy. But the fact that the Reds were able to to do that, get that done without Montes already setting the market high, I think Oakland's got to be happy. I know the Marlins may have to be considering trading Pablo. The Tigers have to be excited because I think this is higher uh, in terms of return than a lot of people would have thought. If you're just getting Noelvi, you wouldn't think that someone that's a borderline top 100 prospect and Edwin Arroyo would also be involved. And then, like Clay said, Levi Stout's no slouch either uh, as a really high floor of a bullpen arm. I still think could be a middle of the rotation starter if it all comes together. And then Andrew Moore is a great fourth piece. I mean, it's just really amazing that they were able to get this kind of, you know, blue chip prospect upside and still get a total of four prospects here. Yeah. Talk a little bit more about like this to me. And again, you're, way more in tune by a million on the uh the the prospect watch than i am i did not expect the reds to get anywhere close to this and i mean obviously trading castillo on friday you know several days before the deadline you would it's got to be a deal like hey we can't pass this up i mean is this about like could you have seen anything better than this? this is this the best case scenario in your opinion yeah, a hundred percent. And I think you kind of make the point there too, where it's you would probably want to wait this out a little bit. You know, there's a lot of teams interested in Luis Castillo. You know, there's a lot of teams with good farm systems interested in Luis Castillo. And uh the the fact that the Reds were willing to just say, Hey, you know, let's let's just do this now, I think is one of those examples where you can just say hey they definitely realized that they probably were not going to get a better offer than this and props to them props to the reds for for taking the burden in hand here because sometimes you have your house for sale the best offer is the first one you always think you're gonna get a better one and you, it never comes um i think that's what this was and the reds were smart to take it uh Marte, clay mentioned the eta i think with what Marte has shown in terms of the advanced uh ability to just consistently hit string together more consecutive good at bats. I think there's a chance we could see him by 2024. I, I think that's very possible. And uh, he's much further along than I thought he would be. Edwin Arroyo. Yes, he's young. Yes, he's still at low A is a safe profile switch hitter. Great bat to ball. I like the glove. He will probably climb pretty quickly as well. Uh, so yes, those are two younger prospects. But I mean, Marte is a guy that I think will be the best prospect traded at this deadline. Um, and, and Edwin Arroyo is the kind of guy that I thought would have probably been the headliner in a deal here. I thought I would have put more money on it being a Arroyo and Hancock maybe, uh, and then a better third piece than Marte and Arroyo. I think that's really what wows me is, is that tandem at the top, a pair of infielders uh, who are really, really exciting. Uh, real quick, uh, and before we get you out of here, I just really appreciate your time tonight. Um, uh, Levi Stout, hopefully I'm saying it right. Um, the C pipelines got him ETA 2023. Two questions for you. Do you see him as a legit big league starter? And do you think like that, that he could be starting in big league games next year? If so, you know, that, that that's tough. I, I think he, I think he could be, I mean, the slider is dynamite. I, I think that's a pitch that's, that's obviously really helped him dominate in the earlier years. Guys have adjusted a little bit because he throws that pitch more than his fastball. Uh, but the fastball has continued to get better. It sits now closer to 90, 93, 95 range, touching six. Uh, he mixes in a changeup. I think he has the ability to do so. Um, I think it's going to be either more of a back end of the rotation profile or a really good reliever. Um, and that's ultimately going to be up to the Mariners to see what they want to do here. But I think he's going to get some opportunities in the rotation. And uh, I think he can prove himself there. Still 24, but I think he could be up at the big league level by next year. No problem. All right, Arm. Well, thank you so much. Uh, repping the Just Baseball hat. Oh, uh, Clay, hell yeah. Clay, I love it. Clay, Clay got me one. I never wear a hat forward, so people, you can take screenshots and make fun of me. I look like a doofus, but wanted to turn it around. Hey, make sure you guys are checking out our friends at Just Baseball. You guys, I'm sure, will have a ton of content on this, a, a podcast going way more detail. So always want to shout you guys out. Appreciate you, Arm. Last minute coming on. Have a great night, buddy. Thank you. I'm excited. I'm going to go right to uh, writing down and breaking down the uh, return on just baseball.com now. So appreciate you uh, having me on real quick. Absolutely. Thanks, Arm. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to Steve. Steve next. Steve, uh, I think you need to unmute, buddy. Sorry about that. Um, I uh, hold on. All right. How about that? You guys hear me? All right. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're good. Um, so 
But yeah, this is a uh, an unexpected team, an unexpected return, but for the Mariners who need to get to the playoffs this year or else everything else has kind of been just leading up to nothing, they really needed to overpay in this thing. And I think the Reds took the right advantage at this time to really improve themselves. Uh, I've been talking about maybe trying to get better for 23 and 24, Joey Votto's last two years with the club potentially, and maybe give him one more shot at the playoffs. That doesn't seem very realistic, but with the extra wild card spot and the guys they got in this deal, they can definitely be competitive by 24, if not, if not 25. But it's just so cool to see a guy like Novi Marte be on the Reds uh, and just such a big prospect. And he's 20. And then Edwin Arroyo, 18. Uh, and then uh, the, Levi Stout, I think he's 20, right? Oh, no, sorry. Uh, it's, he's 24. But and just another young guy. Four young guys that the Reds got – in this deal that you can't be anything but excited about. And Andrew Moore, he's not in their top 30, but uh, I just saw clips of him before coming on here. Thanks for inviting me, Nick. He, uh, he was hitting 99 uh, on the gun. So I I think these are all like definitely now the, the trade won't play out for another five years and we'll see how it goes. But if the Reds are lifting the world series championship by 2027, I'd say you'd be all right with this trade, but Overall, four prospects for a year and a half of Luis Castillo. I, uh, you have the trade values up right now, Nick. I, I think anybody has to be excited about this trade if you're a Reds fan. Yeah, I, I can't believe they got a Royal and Marte. Uh, like I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean that. That's you know I, I remember reading through the Athletic. Uh, did a uh, uh, what? What could Luis Castillo get? Uh, C trend, I think, put it together. <laughs> there was nothing even remotely close to this, you know. That that was uh, the the top package. So um, ultimately, time will tell. You know, uh, it, it's it's silly to you know declare a trade a win or even a fail on on uh, the night it's made. But um, I, I would definitely say this this looks very positive for the Reds. Um, looks like the Reds front office was. Um, you know, really engaged in in a lot of good uh, conversations about trades, and uh, uh, you know, really, uh, I think found the best uh, uh, the best offer out there. Uh, Steve, if you want to stay on, please do. We'll, we'll get back to you. I want to get to Aaron here. Uh, Aaron, uh, over uh, at uh, pardon the punctuation. Thanks so much for joining us here uh, late at night, unexpectedly. Aaron, I know you're not a big prospect guy. I'm not either. I, I would like you, you, I mean, share whatever thoughts you want, but I, I'd like to hear kind of you. I think you'd be a good guy to talk about uh, Luis Castillo and what he meant to the Reds over this last uh, uh, five plus seasons he's been here. Oh, sorry, Aaron, not hearing you. Try again. Now oh, maybe he's going to go out and come back in. Um, Steve, why don't you why don't you talk about let's talk about Castillo because I mean that's important as well. Um, I mean I know we had all kind of expected that he would get traded, he was... but talk about what Castillo meant to the Reds. Yeah, I mean. I think I'm I'm losing Steve's audio too. Well, sorry about that. You know, when you're trying to do a last second show, sometimes you have some technical difficulties. Aaron, are you there? Maybe it's just me. Am I the one who can't hear anything? Okay, so 
My wife texts me and says she can't hear either. So I guess it's not just me. I'm not sure what's going on with you guys. Let me see if I can boot both you, bring you back in. All right. Now I'll try to talk to either one of you. Now, Nick, can you hear me? I can hear you now. There we go. All right. Well, what Steve, about you? Tell me. What you What's that, buddy? Oh, uh, I just want to give Aaron a chance to uh, uh, to give his thoughts real quick. No, I think we're just we're just not not Aaron's night tonight, unfortunately. <laughs> um. Well, Aaron, Aaron, really sorry, man. Uh, we wish we could have got your thoughts here, but yeah, Steve, go ahead. Um, well, so I, before I got cut out, um, by the internet, um, I, I blame my internet for that. Not you, Nick, but, uh, I, man, he was just one of the best pitchers in recent Reds history, if not all of Reds history. Um, other than Johnny Cueto, he was one of the best prospects, we, uh, best pitchers we've had over the last 20 years. And I don't really think that's hyperbole to say that I'm a little bit younger, but, um, I still think he has been just such a a revelation uh, for a guy that we got for Dan Straley. Uh, thank you, Dan Straley. Thank you, Marlins, by the way, for, uh, you know, giving us a guy that's been uh, just such a big part of this team over the past six years. And uh, I, I think it was just really fitting for him to have that moment on uh, Wednesday night and go out the way he did against the team that traded him uh, and go out with such a strong performance. And uh, obviously his performance at Yankee Stadium before the All-Star break too was great. But man, he was really uh, that that second guy in that 20 team uh, that made it to the playoffs, of course. And uh, he didn't start off uh, 2021 that well, but man, he really finished his, his 2021 with just a, a great end. And he was a big part of that team that try to make a run toward the wild card. So um, it's going to be sad, definitely, to not have him around. And uh, I think he's definitely endeared himself a lot more. Uh, just like the the beat it nerd thing. Uh, I, I think he's, he admitted to stealing that from uh, Billy Hamilton. But he has just been such a, a big part of being a fan over the past few years. And it's definitely going to see him – going to be sad to see him go. But – I'm happy for him. Hopefully he can reunite with Gino and Jesse and really get that Mariners team over the hump. Yeah. Maybe they can just, you know, go ahead and trade jury there too. Let's just let, let's let it be Cincinnati West out there. No, I mean, good for them. And, and, and you know, someone Clay mentioned it earlier, uh, you know, they, that's gonna be a fun team to watch. Um, um, I definitely think this was the right move for the Reds, you know, at least, at least on, on paper here on, on, uh, uh, July 29th, but, but yeah, I mean, Dan Straley has netted five years of Luis Castillo and now four prospects. I mean, it is just insane when you kind of, you know, look at it that way. Uh, and it, Dan Straley, what he pitched a year for the Marlins and then he was off to, uh, overseas. I mean, just baseball, that that's baseball, but yeah, I think Luis Castillo is a Reds hall of famer. I'll go ahead and I'll declare that right now. I think one day he should be put in the Reds Hall of Fame. Definitely. Um, and I think this was the right trade for the Reds. Both of those things can be true. We can love Luis Castillo. We can uh, root for Cast Luis Castillo going forward. And uh, also, uh, you know, be be really happy with this trade. Um, yeah. And it's exciting. I mean, it's exciting that they've gotten, you know, two players that are, you know, going to be ready we hope by 2024, you know, I think, I think both Marte and, and Strout, you know, based on their ETA timelines, um, they should be contributors in 2024. If, if things go as expected with them. So that's good. That's kind of when we've talked about the start of a contention window. Um, so that, that aspect of it is, uh, is cool. And then they've gotten, you know, two other guys, um, um, that are a little farther away, but, uh, but are, are, have immense talent as well. So it, it's kind of, you know, you're, you're going to get one crop here and then one crop there. And, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the Reds farm system looks like on Wednesday morning next week. Um, we talked about on our last show, I mean, 
since since uh, Bruce was a prospect, I, I kind of went back through, and the Reds were in the the top half of the prospect rankings, like um, two or three years. I mean, they were in the the bottom half almost every single year. Uh, and now, I mean, the Reds. Uh, I believe Aram said he thought the Reds would probably be the uh, ranked as the third best farm system, uh, most likely at the end of the deadline. So, um, I mean, that that's exciting. Um, you know, I know that the rest of this year is going to suck. Uh, next year is probably going to be um, a sorting year, maybe a 2009 type year. You know, is kind of maybe maybe a good way to think about it. Maybe a 2019 type year, um, you know, either one of those. Uh, but I mean, I think the future's bright for the Reds, and uh, um, yeah, I just well, I can't believe this happened on on Friday night. I just, I just can you believe it happened so far away from the trade deadline? I didn't think there's any way they'd be trading him. I, I thought for sure he would be on Tuesday. So I think we're starting to notice a pattern now that uh, after the games get done, Nick Crawl checks his phone to make sure that the, the deal is in and it's ready to go and the paperwork is ready to be filed. Because uh, last night, obviously, Tyler Naquin was dealt after the Reds completed their game. And then tonight, I think it was only a few minutes after the last out. Uh, the trade went through uh, via Jeff Passan uh, first. But um, it, I, I think... I, Nick, I want to get your thoughts on uh, what Nick Kroll, uh, because he's obviously taken a lot of flack uh, for his offseason moves, but I think what he's done over the past two summer trade deadlines has been nothing short of good, at least if not great so far. I mean, uh, last year he he did what he could and he got uh, two good bullpen arms, oh, three good bullpen arms at the deadline for the Reds, tried to support that team as they – made their playoff push. And right now he's getting a lot of names definitely. And uh, there's still guys to be traded that the Reds could definitely have, like you said, a really good prospect uh, pool by next Wednesday when it's all said and done. What do you think about uh, Nick crawl? Well, I've heard all, all year he's going to get fleeced for Castillo at the <laughs> deadline. And you're going to have a, a hell of a time finding someone who's going to say the Reds got fleeced in this deal. Uh, I would imagine 99% of the, the, the people much smarter than uh, than myself, the people that rank prospect, they're going to think this is a really good return for the Reds. So um, I think if you just look at crawl and you accept, you know, kind of the limitations he's under, I, I really don't know at this point how you can say he's done a terrible job. Um, I, I don't think we need to, you know, throw a parade for him right now or anything like that. Um, I don't think we need to declare him the greatest GM in the history of professional sports. Time's going to tell on a lot of these deals, but I, I just, I don't know what, how you can say this guy's terrible at this point. Uh, I, I just, there's, I think you're just a hater. I'll say, I think you're a hater. <laughs> I think you're a hater. If you, if you, I, I understand, you know, the ownership disdain and all that, but with what he's working with, I, I just, I don't see how you can, you can say he's doing a terrible job. Let's see if we can get Aaron in here. Oh, I hear something. I hear you. I think we're good. Let's go. How you doing, buddy? Thanks I'm for joining right. us. For, for those who said uh, my mic's not down, I just used this headset for hearing. I, I have an actual big mic. We're, we're good. Um, I don't have any idea. I just had to reset my computer twice. So, um, In any case, I'm excited about uh, – what's what's the kid? Mar uh, Marte. Marte. Uh, he's right now a shortstop prospect, um, but it looks like that his future could be as a third baseman or a center fielder where the Reds lacking right now, in addition to shortstop, uh, sh third base and center field. And they're saying that he goes like toe to toe with Julio Rodriguez. Uh, yeah, I'm down for that. I mean, you're in BP, you're going toe to toe with, uh, I don't know, maybe the best hitter for the Mariners right now. Cool. Sign me up for. All of that. Um, I know the Nick Kirby trade machine has been in full effect here over the course of the last, what, two, three months. And I don't know that you ever came up with getting 26 points higher for Luis Castillo. But I think that goes to show a, for a Mariners team who really wants to beat the Yankees. They had to make sure they beat the Yankees, not only in this trade, but if they're trying to beat the Yankees for the pennant, then they had to pull a trigger on 
quite a trade. So, I mean, I think everybody thought the Yankees were front runners before tonight. And here comes Seattle out of, out of nowhere off the top rope. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, I, I can't believe this happened on, on Friday. Yeah, I wouldn't even have, uh, I wouldn't even have thought about trying this trade through the gym. Like, oh, that's way too much. You know, I got to take, like you, like you could, like, you could take a Royal off this trade and it's a fair trade. Yes. <laughs> the, the second that, like, what? Like, but, that's, that's but again, it. That's and, and, team- I, and I know, I know people hate the trade generator and that's fine. Hate it if you want, but it's better than me just guessing. It's better than Steve just guessing. It is actual numbers. Uh, and they had a trade the other night that was spot on. It was spot on what, what it, what it spit out. So, uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, I had this thought pop in my head with the Reds having like 67,000 infielders is Jonathan India moving to the outfield. <laughs> ah, man, I don't I, I like for some, whatever reason, Nick, I, I think of uh, outfielders as tall and uh, I don't tall doesn't really come into my mind when I think of Jonathan India, but I mean, they're, it's a possibility for sure. I would think you would probably move Matt McLean first to the outfield uh, and Reese Hines, who has moved to the outfield um, in the farm system uh, this season uh, before you would move Jonathan India there. Um, but I mean, anything is possible right now. And uh, for people who are thinking that maybe acquiring shortstops is not a good thing, uh, it's pretty well known in scouting uh, terms that shortstop is the most athletic position um, and like the, all the athletes play shortstop and you can move those guys anywhere. Like you can move like Noli to first base if you wanted to. And that could be your like hitting prospect first baseman. Like you could do anything with these guys. They don't have to be short stops. You can kick one to third, kick one to left, kick one to first. Uh, I'm sure if they, they, the Reds have a shortstop who could be kicked to catcher if you really needed to, be, to kick him to catcher right now. Um, so these guys are really athletic and they can move anywhere. So I wouldn't be too worried about uh, that all these guys being shortstops in the system. I think you have a better shot of Tyler Stevenson starting at first base than you have Jonathan India playing in the outfield anytime soon. Yeah, uh, no, I, I definitely I definitely think, though, India moving positions is on the table because, I mean, let's he has not been a good defensive second base. Sure. But it, it's, he's been pretty bad. And, and maybe you move him to third base. Maybe, you know, mm-hmm. most almost every shortstop can play second base. That's a very natural, you know, position. Um, or maybe India plays first base. Maybe, you know, or, or maybe maybe India's, you know, DHing more and, and playing some second base, you know. This this gives you options. Uh, uh, yeah, a lot more options and uh um yeah, and, and we it's it's funny, we just um man, we, we have like three shows in three days here on uh late night red stock, but we, we just did a interview with uh uh we'll shout out Red's uh, uh director of amateur scouting, Joe Katuska, and uh, he was talking about how the Reds want all the shortstops and all the center fielders because they can just move them wherever. And and that's the kind of the organization's philosophy and, and then boom, two more shortstops into the, um, um, into the, uh, into the fold. Uh, Aaron, who else do you think is going to get moved before the deadline? I mean, we've seen Naquin, we've seen Castillo. I, <laughs> Mally, maybe. I mean, pitching, there's always a, a higher premium place on pitching than anything as teams are vying for these playoff spots, and the Reds are nowhere near that. Um, Drury, maybe, as teams look for a, a cheap bat. Um, outside of that, I'd honestly be surprised if you saw any any crazy moves. Out. I, I, I don't know. I mean, if TJ Antone was – healthy maybe you'd see something like that or Luis Sessa maybe you'd see something like that but I, I just don't see the bullpen being a place where anybody's really going to pick anybody off and and everybody else that's pitching is is young they're not moving any of these young pitchers so I don't know I guess I'd really be maybe Tommy Pham but he's also a wild card uh in everything he does in life uh so <laughs> I don't I don't know Steve, what about you? Who do you? Th- who else do you think? Uh... 
might get moved. It's quite a poker face. No, we might have lost him. Oh. Got his audio. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. All right. Who else do you think might get moved? Um, I mean, uh, Aaron mentioned Tyler Malley, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, so definitely Tyler Malley. Um, I could see Mike Miner maybe for cash considerations and a Scooter Jeanette type deal um, just to say thank you, uh, but we need this pitching spot right now. So um, other, I don't really see Tommy Pham getting moved just because of his just-up earlier this year. Um, but definitely I could see uh, a guy like Drew Drury getting moved. Or I could honestly see Kyle Farmer getting moved too. Like he is probably at the peak of his powers right now. I won't tweet that out, but I, he might be at the peak of his powers right now. Um, he's strongest against lefties, which definitely could come in handy for a team as they push for the playoffs and in October. But um, other than that, I'm not really seeing anybody. You're not going to trade anybody who's pre arbitration right now for the reds uh, and who is under team control for a few more years. And, uh, I don't think anybody has really played themselves out of here. Uh, I don't think Matt Reynolds has really played himself out of here. Obviously, Albert Armour is hurt. He hasn't played himself out of Cincinnati uh, this year. I th- I think what we've what we've mentioned and what we uh, what people have kind of put out there is the the limit. Other other than something completely shocking and the Reds trading a guy like Stevenson or India, which I don't. Yeah, I, I heard someone mention Nixon Zell in a, as a possibility, and I, I hadn't thought of that, and it kind of think will happen. intrigued me. I don't think Senzel would get traded, but it's intriguing. I know there's a very small limit on uh, center fielders available, so it kind of kind of interesting. I, I'm not sure. I have no idea what his value would even be right now, but, uh, but yeah, I found that interesting. I'm kind of intrigued if a hole like this maybe changes the minds on Tyler Malley a little bit. You know, knowing we got our big haul, do we want to hold on to Tyler Malley? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm curious. I mean, I think they should absolutely still be shopping him, seeing what, what type of offers they're getting. But I wonder if they are less, I don't think desperate's the word, but I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. I don't, yeah. I, I, I wonder if they're less motivated to trade him, to, to accept a, a, a deal they don't, they aren't in love with. Um, I, I'm cu- I'm curious on that. That'll be kind of something interesting. I'm watching uh, here over the next couple of days. My thoughts on Mally are: if you can find a suitor for him anytime this year, next year, whenever you take it, simply for the way that he pitches at Great American Ballpark, where he pitches more than he pitches anywhere else, because he he does not pitch well there. So you, I I, I don't think it'd be an awful move to move a guy who doesn't pitch well at home. Yeah. And, and I mean, I guess, uh, you know, playing, looking at the other side, I mean, look at what they just got for Castillo. Yeah. I, I don't think Mally's that much lesser of a pitcher, uh, especially if you look at, you know, some of like the independent pitching, um, especially for a team that has a bigger ballpark. For if, sure. If you have a bigger ballpark, I feel like Mally is the better bargain between the two. Yeah. Throw Mally and Petco. Good God. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I mean, I think this is probably just the first. Um, I'm, I'm really glad we, st- I'm, you know, I'm really glad the two trades we got out of the way. Any, I feel like any rational Reds fans is like, oh, those are good returns. So um, I'm just really glad we didn't get one of the, the salary notes. Hey, and the Reds traded Luis Castillo and Mike Moustakas, his name was not on the list. There we go. There we go. Oh, God. So that that worst case fear that now he's going to get yeah. moved with Mally. But and he also he also didn't get injured last night pitching. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, fellas, uh, it's other... an exciting time. Whatever you say, it's yeah. still an exciting. It, it, it's an exciting time. Like I mean, you. It's definitely stinks to lose Castillo, but um, I really think you could see Novi Marte 
uh, up with the Reds as soon as next year, uh, if not 24. I, he is such an exciting prospect. And for the Reds to have a guy that's a top 25 MLB pipeline prospect, uh, number 18 to be exact, is so huge because we all think so highly of Ellie and he's in the top 50 on their site. Um, so just a guy who's already so highly rated. Um, and then just for the, the Mariners too, um, to pull off this trade early uh, and give the Reds some time to really kind of say, this is what we got for Castillo. What can you give us something somewhat like this for our other guys that we have? Um, I think it's a, the Reds are in another position of power, even though they just traded Castillo, they still have valuable assets. They still have guys that other teams will want. And uh, I think if you're Nick crawl, you wait until you get the best deal possible. Like he did tonight. Yeah. How about the, uh, the Mariners rotation, Gilbert, Castillo, Ray, Flexen, Kirby, my guy, that's who I really wanted to get. I wish we could have got Kirby, man. That would have been. I could have. I could have brought a jersey like with my name on it. That's at, you know for I don't have to be that guy with the personalized jersey, but you know still have to go both ways. But yeah, I mean, look, it, it's going to be a rough second half. Twenty twenty three is probably a long stretch. Although I, I don't think they're going to be. You know, Chicago Cubs, Houston Astros tanking you know, bad, but there is, I just saw a tweeted from, uh, from my friends, Bryce, there's a plan and you can absolutely see the plan. You don't have to like the plan, but there's a plan and I'll leave it on this. Let's hope that the reds can stick to this plan because if they do, it can work, it can work. And, uh, um, that's, that's always kind of been my biggest beef of the years that they haven't stuck with the plan. Well, Steve, Aaron, Aram, Clay, was there anyone else on here? I don't, this went really quick. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. I wanted to get something up ASAP. Uh, of course, all the boys were were God knows where tonight, but uh, I definitely wanted to get something up. So thank you to everyone who joined us, joined us in the comments. Uh, who knows? I might be back here tomorrow night if uh, Tyler Malley gets traded. Uh, but if there's another big trade, we will try to come back on. Uh, as always, uh, Late Night Reds Talk is presented by uh, our friends at Bet Online. Uh, get 50% off your first your first deposit with the promo code Believe50 B L E A V five zero. Have a great night. Go Reds! Thanks for having me on, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Thanks.